The entire stock market relies on one thing, persistent hand over fist money injections from all sides, central banks, hedge funds, pensions, and retail investors. If the amount of money is reduced at just a moderate amount, like in 2018, markets will get spooked and then will wet the bed. December 2018 made it very clear what you and I have known all along. The financial system is 100% completely reliant on constant stimulus from everyone involved. The fragility is clearly present and the cracks in the foundation will surely expand as the weight from above, the derivatives and everything else imaginable pile up and up and up. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about a few factors, but essentially what we're looking at here is a complete collapse. I am talking about the society itself eroding, the economy decaying, and everything that intertwines all that which is barely kept around today falling apart. How does this happen? Well, we begin by printing money. When you start to print money, you create a wealth gap. You create a divide in between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots and overall you start to see this foment and you start to see it build up and people start getting pissed off and they take to the streets then you see what happens in many of these countries today right now where people are simply losing their minds that's why i wrote on the back of my second book soon the earth will rumble under the heels of the angry mobs simply because that is exactly where we are headed in today's video, I wanted to talk about the talking heads on TV always pushing what is good for their advertisers, not what is best for their viewers. They've been caught over and over again being paid to promote products and services without acknowledging this. And there's one example that comes to mind right now is Forbes. They got caught actually selling products or trying to sell products, getting paid to do so and not telling anybody what eventually that came out and we know exactly what has happened in other other instances as well. Nothing really needs to be hidden. Nothing needs to be in the shadows. We know how this works. It's a business. When they're on TV telling you something, they are trying to make money. This is a business, just like a stock, just like a hedge fund, a mutual fund, fund companies in general. They are there to make money. It's all about assets under management. If you ever see these big companies, if you ever talk to them or know the people working on the inside of them, ask them, what's the big deal what's going on what do you talk about always 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 the big deal is assets under management there are a growing number of people who can't pay their bills on time who take on more and more debt and who carry a balance on their debt such as credit cards this is a big issue if people are only paying the minimum every time that's great for the credit card company but not good for the economy in the long term as well as in the financial system because we know how derivatives work and that wasn't so good back a decade ago. Globally, society is in a state of upheaval. While there are countless reasons, much is rooted in the lack of prosperity. If you have people that have an abundance of prosperity, chances are that their situation is going to be calm, going to be peaceful, they're employed, they're buying things, they're going on vacation, they're enjoying everything as it stands. When something is disrupted in there, they take to the streets. So let's get into that today. I wanted to begin by taking a look at this. I'm 100% in equities. You're never going to make enough money if you have 40% of your money in bonds, according to this CNBC anchor. You may recognize her, essentially completely ignoring all of the other asset classes, sticking to paper, and thinking that there's only two options. I can buy stocks or I can buy bonds, and that's it. No, what they are doing here is that, in her case, she's brainwashed, so we don't know exactly what's going on, but they cannot talk about the other assets classes if they talk about real estate they're talking about REITs if they're talking about precious metals they're talking about mining stocks they're talking about ETFs they are never talking about the other asset classes sticking to one and why because of their advertisers because of the business model the way it works they can't tell you anything else so you can't trust anything they say the people they bring on and anything that is disrupted or, or goes out of that line just a little bit they literally lie 
laugh at it. I've seen this countless times and these people are a bunch of fools and they are willfully ignorant about simple facts. Rental properties are a terrible investment according to a fintech company with 22 billion in assets under management. They actually suggest here that buying real estate is very bad in general. Not necessarily today, just in general. We're talking about a fintech company. Does this individual know anything about real estate? What have they done? What is their experience? But yet they put this information out there in the mainstream to make you then get into what they sell, what they offer, what they advertise. People need to understand the game. It's funny that Robinhood app where people think, oh, this is fantastic. Now the average person is able to get in. They're able to make money just like the big guys, just like the Jeff Bezos is out there. This is fantastic. Take from the rich, give to the poor. And then the information came out that they were actually selling the data to other companies so that they can front run the trades. How does that sound? But this is really what's important, okay? We need to focus on this type of information and bring it up anytime we can. Nearly one third of American consumers have delinquent debt and in some states and counties, the share of people with overdue bills is even higher, even higher, can you believe it, than one third? Well, you could see the data that's in this if you're interested. I want to touch on just a couple points here and if you want, you could look deeper. Nationwide, 31% of people with credit bureau records had debt in collections last year. The median amount of that debt was $1,600. The share of consumers with financial distress, despite the fact it's going down since the Great Recession, is still quite high. 16% of consumers had medical debt. This is a huge one. I've shown you time and time again how this has skyrocketed. But guess what? When they look at this on paper, when you see what the economy is, the economy being GDP, do you realize that this expenditure, this medical expense that so many people have today goes into the GDP, making it look like the consumers are so fantastic. The consumers are doing well. They're doing great. But really, a larger percentage percentage of their disposable income is being spent on this medical debt. We've got an issue here that people don't get. But I know if you're on this channel, and of course you're doing your own digging, you already knew that. Enrollments in post-secondary education declined for the eighth consecutive year. They give you the details, they give you the numbers, but essentially people are not going into college and university as much as they did previously. This is the eighth consecutive year. There's a clear trend right now. And why? Because of the debt. The debt is so massive. We're looking at over $1.6 trillion worth today. Many of these individuals simply claim that they will never pay it back. They can never pay it back and they never will pay it back. The amount that's in delinquency today continues to grow and this has become bigger than all of the other types of debt, bigger than the credit cards, bigger than so much, and there's no way to turn it around. It grows every single year and it is a Frankenstein they can't control. Right here in the middle paragraph, a Federal Reserve Bank of New York survey of consumer credit released on Monday showed a spike in the rate of auto loan rejections to 8.1% from 45 in the same month last year. That has definitely been a problem. We've seen everything to do with auto loans being an issue. The amount that people pay per month has been going up. We have seen the length of time that people are taking to pay back their cars is simply growing and growing and growing and the total amount of debt that people have has compounded all of this i should also note that in here they mention the fact that this actually declined for things like mortgages right now what we have with the decreasing level of mortgage rates and interest rates in general that has been benefiting a lot of people and they've been taking advantage what we can see right now with one of the most popular jobs in the United States is that so many stores, the retail stores, have closed down, but it is not isolated to just retail. We've seen all different types of industries being affected by a slowdown in the economy. When you look at any type of freight right now, they are suffering. Doesn't mean that every single company is doing poorly if you're working in freight. Some people say there's so much work, we can't handle it. But 
largely when you look at the actual data that's coming through different companies. I just talked about Celadon. There are others actually doing the same thing. They're laying people off. There is a serious slowdown that has taken place. If you look at the ISM data, I've shown you that before. Many different things. Right now, as of today, 9,300 store closures in the United States. There are stores that are opening 4,500. But did you know that 1,500 plus of these stores are dollar stores? So the large percentage of these openings are dollar stores. Now, there's nothing wrong with dollar stores, but it just tells you what's happening. People are more interested in the dollar store type stores than anything else. This is a really good chart. How much.net is a great resource if you never heard of it before. They actually contacted me once and told me any data that I want put into a chart like this, they would make for me, which I think is fantastic. I've never actually got them to create one, but I really like finding charts on their site. This right here gives you the 20 years of price changes in the United States. And take a look at this. I mean, it is unbelievable to see this, even though you and I probably already know this. When you put it on a chart like this, like this it really speaks to me so this is the zero line here and you will see that hospital services college tuition and fees college textbooks child care medical care apparently average hourly earnings have gone up considerably over the years i don't really think that's the case but that's a whole different story housing food and beverages and so on it goes through all of this and it's just funny to see it and be told somehow that inflation is actually less than 2%. Now, sure, you might not have a kid that is going to college right now. You may not have to buy some college textbooks. You may not have a child in your child care services. But somehow, some way along the line, you are paying higher than 2% more than what you did the year before. It's a joke when they talk about this, especially when they get rid of what they love to say, volatile. Every time they always throw this in, volatile food and energy prices. Hey, let's talk about the volatile food and energy prices. Oh, well, we can't include that in the core PCE, right? Because that is including the volatile food and energy prices over and over and over and over. They just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it so that you believe the lie. Even in the face of declining unemployment, insolvency rates among Canadian households climbed in 2019, and the ascent will continue if the Bank of Canada raises interest rates. They do get into more detail here. I just wanted to mention this very quickly. The situation in Canada, of course, is not very good because the economy relies 100% at this point, relies 100% on real estate going up forever. That is a big, big no-no. That is a disaster waiting to happen. I really don't think they're going to increase interest rates. If anything, they'll decrease them because that's what central banks around the world have been doing. Looks like they're going to go in that direction for the foreseeable future. But just wanted to show you that because people, despite the fact that interest rates are extremely low, still they can't pay their bills. Angry French pensioners offer the world a warning. This gives you a breakdown here out of Bloomberg. I'm not going to get into it. Just wanted to show you that this is one country that is really, really hurting right now. Big upheaval. People take into the streets. It's been a long time. They are not happy. I'll show you a couple examples. All of these are for different reasons, but just want to show you how quickly things can go from everyday, normal, fantastic behavior to everything being thrown upside down down. India's slowdown has certainly been the most underappreciated aspect of the current global downturn in Q3 this year. The Indian economy reached a six-year low at 4.5% year over year, down from 5% in the previous quarter. You could see the trend of growth. It doesn't mean that they're not growing. It means that they are slowing down, just like China's slowing down, just like the US has slowed down considerably. Over the years, this is what has happened, and it's on a global scale. They're trying to ramp that up a little bit but this is not a good thing i assure you because of the way that they're doing it this is out of reuters hundreds of people people take it to the streets for this particular issue there's all kinds of photos and videos if you haven't seen them already definitely check it out it's massive when you think about the sheer population in a place like india how many people are affected by rules that are implemented by changes that are happening whether it's on the political side whether it's on the monetary this is one country to watch 
watch. I know I have so many subscribers from India, so I just wanted to include the information where I can. If you know anything personally, definitely let me know in the comment section. And the last one I wanted to mention was what's happening with the farmers in Argentina. Their worst fears were confirmed as the new government proposed an increase in export taxes just three days after a first hike roiled the Pampas crop belt. So we just had the news, the trade deal between the US and China. It's fantastic. It's great. Everything is wonderful. But I did a video telling you, showing you all of the information related to Brazil and Argentina being excellent partners with China, exporting a lot of products like soy, for instance. And now this comes around. So this is going to hurt those farmers very bad. There's the, all the numbers you need. All the figures are here. Just wanted to mention it very briefly again. Here's the chart that is associated with that, giving you the breakdown, soybeans, corn, wheat. They're trying to fix the problems in the country and they're going to hurt a lot of people as a result. We'll see what happens. Uh, of course, we'll have any relevant information for you. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit the thumbs up button, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want to learn how to build a business, if you want to understand passive income, truly learning how to manage an income for yourself outside of your nine to five, check out my free 100% free e-course, the Amazon GPS.com. If you want to know what's going on in the financial world, whether you're new to it, whether you are experienced, these two books will cover everything. It gets into all the details. Everything you need to know is in the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second. Did you know the information in this video? If you haven't seen it already, you definitely need to watch it. Click on it and I will see you there.